tonight on a special edition of Evening. We're getting cozy in the kitchen with our favorite comfort food recipes. Hey everybody, I am Chef McKinney Howe and today we are making a plant-based gumbo to warm you up. Plus, the story behind Harvey's Butter Rum Batter. Good evening and welcome to a special edition of Evening. How special? So special that we have special effects! No, we're not standing in my garage. What would give you that idea? That's crazy. This show is all about a celebration of comfort food. You know the comfort food we're talking about, the stuff that doesn't just literally warm you up, but it warms up your soul. For me, there's nothing better than a hot cup of chai latte, and there happens to be a mix of this stuff at Costco that I picked up. You just go 50% mix and 50% soy or milk. The choice is yours. Heat it up in the microwave, and it is delish. Throughout the show, members of Team Evening will be sharing their favorite cozy recipes as well as comfort food to go for Jose. His favorite is a Venezuelan dish that's popular at parties and family gatherings, tequeños. When I think about good food to go, I think about the crew of Seattle's Youth District Arepa Venezuelan Kitchen. Of course they have arepas, empanadas, and tequeños. Oh my goodness, the tequeños are like to die for. Take a mozzarella cheese stick and like 10x it easy to just take it and go. It's a little bit of, of Venezuela, really, but it's also something that's pretty familiar. So you can order the tequeños frozen and you can make them at home so they're nice and fresh. And that's exactly what I did. All you need is a pan or a pot, oil, some heat, and of course, the tequeños. I normally set the heat for a little bit more than half, and it takes about three to four minutes to be crispy done. Now my suggestion to you is do this right before the guests arrive. One for the freshness and two so they can see you cooking and they believe you did it all. I already figured out it's easier just to throw them. Oh. Okay. Oh boy. Okay so I think now we just wait for the results. Now, normally Venezuelans will eat this with a little bit of sauce, but I'm gonna make it as simple as possible. And as you can see, I did make a big mess in the kitchen and burn them a little bit. But if you're having problems like me, just order them to go. Mmm. If you do fail making it at home, we've always got you covered at the restaurant. Thank you, Jose. Looks like things got a little rough there. I know we can count on photojournalist Diane Lewis-Torrey. She has a recipe that she's made for the crew several times. Hi everybody, I'm Diane. I'm a photojournalist for Evening, and I have a great recipe. It's called Chocolate Breakups, and it only has four ingredients. You're gonna love it. All you need is sugar, butter, salting crackers, and chocolate chips. This recipe is comforting and cozy to me because the recipe comes from a cookbook my mom gave to me for Christmas several years ago. It's also special because I have brought this treat to many King 5 Evening potlucks to share with my coworkers, and everybody loves it. Okay, if you're looking for something to serve with those chocolate breakups, we have a tasty suggestion. It's a Northwest tradition a lot of people have been enjoying for years, one to keep you warm on chilly nights. Here's Kim. It began in 1952 when then Bremerton bartender Harvey Hudson set out to make a better hot butter rum batter. He started actually making the batter at home in his kitchen because he didn't like the batter at the bar that he was bartending at. By the 60s, Harvey's batter was so popular he took his homemade recipe and began producing it for the public. And Harvey's butter rum batter was born. After Harvey passed away at age 94 in 2011, his family sold the decades-old business to Bremerton businesswoman Stacy Ryan and her husband Scott, who vowed to keep faithful to what Harvey had created. They loved it and they wanted somebody that would take it like their, their dad did and love it like their dad did. We start making it in August 
we can actually produce year round, but the biggest season is during the holiday time. And we use the same recipe that Harvey did. And that recipe starts with butter and lots of it. 55 pound block of butter that gets cut a little bit less than that and that's the first to go in the mixing bowl and then we add the sugars. Blends for about 20, 22 minutes until it's just the right consistency. We actually have a machine that pumps it into the hopper. Almost as important as how it's made is where it winds up. The tub, the yellow tub, it's so iconic. We didn't want to change that. Though it's sold all around the Northwest, most people who buy it don't know that it's also made right here in Washington. They have no idea that it's made right here in Bremerton. It's kind of this little, se little secret. Harvey may be gone, but Stacy and her family are dedicated to keeping his tasty Northwest tradition very much alive. It really is about creating those family memories. It's a tradition every year. Okay, Stacy recommends using a dark rum for your hot buttered rum and don't skimp on that spoonful of Harvey's you put in it. Now that drink obviously is not good for the entire family, but here's a recipe that is something you can make with your kids. Our boss suggested it herself. Hi, I'm Lindsay Sievercrop, the director of local programming for King Five, and this is my daughter Ruby. Can you say hi? <laughs> Ruby is four and a half and she loves pizza. So our favorite cozy cooking recipe is homemade pizza. Well, semi-homemade because I like to use this Delalo flour pizza dough kit. Flour in the bowl. You can put the yeast in the bowl. And then just mix it together. One and a quarter cup of warm water. You do have to knead the dough and let it rise for 45 minutes after you mix it, but it's totally worth the wait. It's something really fun for the kiddos to do and get involved. What kid doesn't like pizza? It's pretty cheesy. What do you think? Is it good? Thumbs up? No? You don't like it? Yes, you do. You're eating it. Lindsay assures us the pizza turned out delicious. Ruby says uh, they might have used a little too much cheese. We'll let them battle it out. If you'd like to look at any of those recipes, we have them all up on our website, king5evening.com. Coming up, warm up with Chef McKinney Howe's meatless gumbo recipe. Plus, Kim gives us a taste of her homemade mac and cheese when evening's cozy cooking special continues. My favorite cozy meal to cook is macaroni and cheese, but not from the box, it's from scratch. It's an adaptation of Nancy Reagan's mac and cheese recipe, but it is so good, it's ooey gooey. And the key is you don't make the roux first and then add the pasta. You actually make the pasta first and then you build all the flavors on top of that. One of the big secrets, you add an egg and there's also mustard powder, which gives it a little bit extra flavor. I promise this is so easy to make. It is as quick as using a box, but all of the ingredients that you're using are whole foods and it is the perfect comfort food. Thank you, Kim. Looks delicious. I want to whip some of that up right here, right now in my very own kitchen. It's not real. It's, it's not a real kitchen? It's not real. Why didn't somebody tell me? Okay, Chef McKinney Howell has her own kitchen, fortunately, because she's going to show us how to make a warm bowl of plant-based gumbo. Hey guys, it is getting cold outside and I'm gonna show you how to make a warming bowl of gumbo. So, you say gumbo, right? How are we gonna do that without any meat? Well, Beyond Meat has these beautiful sausages that will make your gumbo more than delicious. These are gonna have a really soft texture when you get them. Don't freak out. We're gonna use this just like you would use a regular sausage in your gumbo. And I like this because it's gonna make it super hearty and very filling. Now, the secret to good gumbo 
is the roux. Now, the darker the roux, the better the pot of gumbo. The only thing about this is that you have to make sure that you watch the roux as it um, roux <laughs> as it cooks. <laughs> so the holy trinity of gumbo is celery, onion, and green pepper. And you can add a little bit of garlic in there as well. Now, a lot has been said about okra. You cannot make gumbo without okra. I like okra. If you don't like okra, you shouldn't eat gumbo. <laughs> So we're gonna pull all of this out in this slotted spoon that should have been a spoon and not a scooper. <laughs> we're gonna pull all this out and add our vegetables in. Holy Trinity into the pot. Don't be afraid of that sticky stuff on the bottom. That's gonna make your soup taste really good. This smells absolutely delicious. Once you feel like it's gotten to the color that you like, add in the stock. You could add a little bit of wine to it to deglaze your pan and to give it a little acidity. Just a little. Time for the stock. And the okra, sausage, tomatoes, Worcestershire <laughs> sauce. This is another thing that's gonna give you a little more depth of flavor. A little bit of cayenne, tiny bit of sugar, a little bit of thyme. I'm using a Cajun seasoning and it's a little spicy. Tiny bit of white pepper. And depending on how peppery you want to get, put a little black pepper in there too. Let's not forget the salt. I want to let this cook until it thickens up a bit. And my okra starts to soften up a little bit. Oh, that's ready. And let's ladle a bit in. This smells delicious. Gumbo is always served with a little bit of rice on top to make it a hearty meal. And a little bit of fresh herbs, with some parsley, green onion whatever you've got in the fridge. All right, so there you have it. A delicious plant-based gumbo to warm you up. Thank you, chef. So what if you don't feel like cooking, but you're still craving something warm and comforting? Well, Ellen has a great spot to get food to go. If I want super cozy takeout, I almost always go to New Leaf Bistro in West Seattle and get their steak pho. There's just something magical about pho. It's warm, it's comforting. If I ever feel bad, whether physically or emotionally, I just get a bowl of pho and it's like a giant warm hug. And if I'm feeling uh, really extravagant, I'll also get their black sticky rice for dessert. That is one of my favorite desserts. That is also extremely comforting. Ooh, mwah, chef kiss, Italian chef kiss, mwah. Even though New Leaf is a Vietnamese restaurant, I'm Italian, mwah. Okay, let's keep this international theme rolling with a recipe that comes to us from our associate producer, Gloria. It is stir-fried bitter melon. She loves to make this because it reminds her of her home country, Indonesia. Today, I'm going to show you how to cook my comfort food. It's stir-fried bitter melon. First of all, make sure to scrap out all the seeds from bitter melon. Fried garlic, galangal roots, some jalapeno if you like, and lemongrass. Galangal and ginger, they are look alike, but they taste completely different. So if you like Thai food, you might like this kind of food too, because we are using almost same kind of ingredients. In Indonesia, we will add orange leaf, but since it's hard to find, I substitute that with lime juice. Add one tablespoon of fish sauce, add oil or water until the bitter melon gets off. Don't forget the shrimp, and voila, stir fried bitter melon shrimp that reminds me of my hometown. Coming up, Chef Tom Douglas cooks up some comforting cabbage rolls, just like Grandma used to make. Hey y'all, Ellen here. So one of my favorite cozy things to bake is pumpkin cranberry bread. It's not only delicious, but it has a lot of great memories associated with it. I can remember making it with my great aunt in her kitchen when I was little, and every time I make it, it just makes me feel really, really good. The good thing is that it's also pretty easy to make. It just takes canned pumpkin, sugar, flour, etc. You can only buy cranberries, I know, usually in the winter, but the good news is that you can freeze those cranberries and the recipe will work just as well. This is a super special recipe for me, so I hope you enjoy it just as much as I do. Welcome back to evening's cozy cooking special. Let's change up the kitchen. Like a boss. 
Seattle chef Tom Douglas says there's nothing better than eating something warm and familiar on a chilly winter night. And for that, we head on over to the Hot Stove Society kitchen for a comfort food classic. Hi, today I'm going to teach you how to make one of Grandma's favorite foods. We're going to work with Savoy cabbage today, a classic kind of wintertime vegetable. Slice right in. Be a little bit generous. Don't go like right in tight to the core, but be a little bit generous, maybe a half inch to an inch around the core. We're going to take our whole head of cabbage. We're just going to drop it right in to our pot of boiling water. See how this leaf is just kind of starting to fall off on its own, right? You can help them if you want. Let's start pulling our blanched leaves out. Let them drain for a bit. So much easier than trying to peel them off. When we go to stuff our cabbage leaves, we want them to be whole. All right, now it's time to make our filling. I have Italian sausage here. If it's not in bulk, just peel the uh, links of sausage and then you have bulk sausage. I have ground chicken and ground lamb. Now, any mix of this, turkey, beef, veal, any mix is fine. We're gonna mash that together. Into my mix of meats, I'm going with some onion cooked wild rice. I'm going to use some of my own rubs. I have a veggie rub that's got a lot of fennel and uh, smoked paprika, things like that in there. These are a couple of secret ingredients in my kitchen that uh, I use in places you might not expect. So I have tomato paste, a little bit of anchovy paste. Now some people go, oh, anchovy, but this is an umami flavor, right? This is something that you're never going to recognize as anchovy, but you're going to taste, you're going to taste the cabbage roll and just wonder why it's so delicious. <laughs> And my favorite secret ingredient in my kitchen, chipotle Tabasco. So for every pound of meat, you want one egg. So there's our stuffing for our cabbage rolls. Take your knife, and we're going to de-stem these just a touch. Just kaboom and kaboom. Not all the way down, but just, just where it might be a little bit tough. Take our two ends, marry them over top. Take a scoop of our cabbage roll mixture. Go over with your two ends. Grab it. Pull it back. Roll, roll, and in to a little bun, right? And you want the sealed end down. Kind of want them to be about the same size so they cook evenly. Just make a tomato sauce, put it right over top, and it's simply from there into the oven. So after being in the oven for about an hour or about 165 degrees in the center, we're simply going to plate up a couple of rolls per person. And then I like to finish with a little bit of olive oil. Up next, scones like the ones from the fair without waiting in line. Hi everyone, I'm Megan Stewart, the executive producer of Evening. Stepping in front of the camera tonight, please don't judge me too harshly. My husband loves donuts, and so when I found the easiest donut hack, I became obsessed. You make them with canned biscuits. This part always gets me. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so you can just lay them out. And I just use a knife, but you gotta have your donut holes too. They never come out perfect, but I think that's the best part. For the topping, cinnamon and sugar. That's it. All right, now it's time to dunk them. And there you go. Fresh donuts. Welcome back to our cozy cooking special. You know what I'm in the mood for? Fair food. Don't you love those nostalgic comfort foods? Well, there's a way to get fair food right at home. Here's Kim with more. Waiting in the scone line has been a Washington rite of passage for more than a century. But now it's inside this box, an at-home kit for Fisher Fair scones. There's the mix and the jam, and the most fun part of all. Scone sleeves that you get them in at the fair, and then even the, uh, the scone bag that is, that they come in. A piece of the Puyallup in one package, assuming one thing. Can anyone do this? This is my big question. Yes, yes, it's uh, just add water. A worthy challenge for my 12-year-old, who followed the simple instructions. She mixed, kneaded, formed the dough, and placed it in the oven. It reminds you of uh, being at the fair and smelling the scones uh, being baked at the fair. Then you simply slice, add butter and jam, place them in the sleeves, and voila, a tasty reminder of simpler times. 
Harry hopes the home kits also inspire people to share the love. What better baked item can you do with her? Individually wrapped in a, in a bag and, and bring it to family or friends or co-workers. But if you enjoy the scones all by yourself, you'll get no judgment here. Thanks, lady. Well, that does it for our cozy cooking special. If you'd like to see any of the recipes, just go to our website, king5evening.com. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for allowing me to bring these high-tech special effects into your home. Have a great evening. We'll see you next time. <gasps>